I want to talk a little bit specifically about some of the stuff I've learned from you and um, a couple other folks at Datron that have, has turned out to be really good information and that I'm starting to share um, with other makers and I'm starting to see some success there. So Winston and I both run really small machines. Um, Winston does more work with Shapeoka, which I'm still uh, just kind of getting started with. Don't have much experience with that particular combination of spindle power and and the rigidity of the of the uh, extrusion based machine, but on my smaller machines here, the other mill, the Pocket and C, and the Nomad, I've been having really good luck with the uh, single flute cutters in aluminum and brass, which you know, I never would have guessed. I, I've always known those to be perfect for plastic um, until I kind of ran into you and and the U.S. Datron team. I never would have thought to try those in in metal, um, and then even when it was suggested to me, you know, and I saw how it worked on something like the Neo with the 60K RPM spindle. I was still thinking, okay, well, that makes sense. It works there. But uh, it was a big surprise to me to find out how well these small single flute cutters work on metal. Um, it's actually kind of transformed what I can do with my machines. I was just kind of wondering if you had any thoughts about why those, why that particular cutter geometry works so well on low power uh, spindles like on, on the Pocket NC and the, uh, the other mill. Any particular insight you might have with your your background in machining? Yeah, this is going to get a bit, little bit technical now. Perfect. Datron, um, where I worked, and I worked also in tool development there, um, specializes in single flute cutters because they don't have a lot of spindle power. I mean, most of the spindles are, are like 1,000, 2,000, maybe 4,000 watts. And this is a similar situation with your machines. You have very little uh, spindle power. And if you look at cutting tools, what the manufacturers write, they often don't defy a certain feed rate, but they just tell you, yeah, you should have a feed per tooth that is like 0.1 millimeters or something like this. And the reason behind this is you want to cut a chip. You don't want to just wrap along the machine, uh, the material. You don't want to wrap around along the material. It's not grinding, but it's milling, chip production. And if you have a very small spindle, you don't have a lot of power. And I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but basically every chip you produce, of course, takes a certain amount of power wattage. And if you have multiple fluids, your feed rate needs to be really low because you are cutting all the time. So your chip thickness decreases because you are running slower. And that's actually something, I think, which helps on your small machines with the single flute cutters. You have only one flute cutting, so you can have a decent feed rate, a decent chip thickness, but your spindle doesn't slow down too much. One thing I really found with the single flutes is it seems to be a lot more forgiving, uh, or at least it has a broader range of speeds and feeds that work compared to the multi-flute cutters, um, especially on aluminum. I would often get into trouble even with the coated three flutes with, uh, if I had the speed and feed dialed in just right, everything went pretty well. Um, but any kind of, uh, variation either in the material or, um, maybe I changed depth of cut a little bit to try to go a little faster. I would end up with chip welding on my cutters. I think this is another big advantage of the single flute cutters because you have a single flute. You of course have a huge space for chip evacuation which you don't have if you have a four flute or six flute cutter. So for soft materials like plastic, where the chip volume is really big, of course, single flute cutters make sense. But for your small machines, and as a hobbyist, you of course don't have flood coolant at home because it's dirty, it stinks, and the small desktop machines are not used to running it. So you don't have a good cooling system, which of course, the single flute profits from more than a three flute because you just get the hot chips faster away from the um, chip zone, chip forming zone. Yeah, I think that's actually the, the biggest benefit I'm seeing is the chip evacuation on the single flutes. Um, I've noticed it a lot more on some of the, when I'm like boring a hole to prepare a fixture or something, I'm doing kind of half inch aluminum plate. And that, that's usually where I would run into problems with the multi flute cutters, uh, the deeper pockets, and I have yet to have any kind of problems with the single flute. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure there was some science or rationale behind uh, what I'm seeing, because I do recommend them a lot. Now, a lot of folks ask me, I'll have a, maybe a new follower that just got a Nomad and starts asking me about tooling up, and if they're working in aluminum or plastic, I'll usually say, you know, 
this probably isn't what you've heard before, but give some of these smaller single flutes a try. Give the recommendation based on my experience with them, and I often share the, the speeds and feeds that worked for me, but never really felt comfortable. I didn't really have a, you know, it, it wasn't common wisdom to me to use that tool for that type of uh, milling. So it's nice to know there's some, you know, what the rationale behind it is and kind of why it's working so well. So thank you for sharing that. I think another big advantage of the single flute cutters, um, I mean, normally it's a disadvantage. The single flute cutter by design is not balanced. Of course, Datron offers balanced tools, but even if you take a different manufacturer who, where the single flutes are not balanced, on a normal milling machine, if you have a huge tool, a huge single flute cutter, this will vibrate. But on your small machines, you use very small tooling, so they don't vibrate a lot. But where they actually shine is the run out of the spindle, because, I mean, I don't want to bash small machines. I love the pocket and C, but of course, the spindle run out is not as good as on a professional level machine and or the spindle stiffness and with a two flute or three flute cutter what actually happens is like one flute is maybe cutting a little bit further to the right and then the next flute because of deflection or run out is cutting a little bit less in so first off you get different chip load on the different flutes which is not good for the lifetime of the tool but also your surface is not ideal this is especially true if you're like for example doing a parallel operation with a ball end mill And with a single flute ball and mill, you actually have a perfect surface, no matter the spindle run out, because at every rotation, it's at the same place. That's good to know. I um, I checked none of my machines have hydrostatic ways, so I think you're right about them not be, <laughs> being like the big machines. <laughs> It does bring up uh, sort of an interesting point. Um, since the Shape Oco is a less rigid machine, I haven't had a lot of experience with the single flutes. Um, That uh, the sort of the harmonics of using a single flute is something I'd definitely be interested in seeing. Because um, I've used like variable helix cutters before in aluminum, and with the rigidity of my machine, I still get like a, a, a fair amount of chatter, unless I really step down or well, step up and take a shallow depth of cut. Um, so sort of understanding the the physics of how a single flute works would kind of be interesting to me. Have you looked into sort of The, the cutting forces, um, the, the harmonics of single flutes um, in the work that you do? Um, looked into it, decided it's not my type of math, and closed the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's super technical, and the main problem is all the analytical um, models for modeling milling are super complicated and still are super simplified because there are so many processes happening at the same time. You get tool deflection, you get spindle deflection in the bearings, you get spindle preload through spindle warming. So it's a huge amount of effects. It's really hard to model this. Um, if anyone is really good in this and knows a solution, hit me up on Instagram. I would love to know. Yeah, I plan on uh, extending my single flute experimentation into the shape Oco. Uh, I have some larger, you know, six millimeter, five millimeter cutters that I'm looking forward to running in aluminum there. And we'll see, see how well that works. Uh, cause I think on that machine, you know, chip evacuation is even more critical. Chip evacuation is, is one thing, but the, the run out invariance, um, is also pretty huge, I think. So definitely curious to see how that works out for you. What I found out, just an empirical view, um, with three flute cutters, you of course get certain harmonics, and sometimes they are bad, sometimes they are better. This is what tuning in your spindle means. With single flutes, I found that sometimes you hit a spot which is really an awesome sweet spot, and sometimes you have a near catastrophic failure. So <laughs> I've seen machines hobbing around from a single flute cutter, a non-balanced one, running too fast. So you can go big, but you can also go home with these tools. Wow. Well, I'm definitely a, a fan of the of the single flutes on the little machines. Um, anything?